Hey guys, hope you're all doing well today. So it is now actually later in the day. I'm having a really relaxing night, working on the Lego, watching uh, the baby otter Joey. It, it's just an overall good night. So let me show you what I got done on the uh, Millennium Falcon for now. All right, so right now we uh, we just finished with stage eight, which added some bottom features to the uh, four triangle pieces. Uh, not too bad, it kind of just clips right into here where you see the little uh, yellow pieces connecting it on top. It did just go into that and then you put the yellow on there to hold it in place. Uh, as well as getting some stuff on the bottom, let's see if we can look at that. This stuff right here, this piece going across here and this piece going across right here. Added those on both sides as well as adding these two things here and these two things here. So it wasn't too long, I would probably say about an hour, hour and a half tops. And as far as baby Joey goes, I got him on the 65 inch while I'm out here working on the Lego so I can enjoy watching my little buddy as well as working on my Millennium Falcon. He is just too cute. Oh, he's got the little hiccup. Oh, he's a cutie. Now I went and donated to the Marine Mammal uh, Rescue Center up in Canada, that's actually the facility that's helping uh, with Joey um, and getting him up to speed and whatnot. And he's got a bit of a sad story. Joey was, I mean, it's a good story now. I, I can't believe how much he's changed, how much he's grown into a uh, a good young a good young otter. But he started off being a baby who was washed up in someone's backyard, and he was a few feet away from a dead otter who they presumed was his mother uh, so he had an unfortunate start to the world uh, but the folks up in um, up in the, the rescue center um, have been taking fantastic care of him he is a playful little otter but if you'd like to donate yourself uh, I went and did a donation donation this past weekend if you'd like to or learn anything about the, the rescue center I will have all the links below as well as the uh, YouTube link to check out their channel because uh, they always have a live stream of Joey um, and there's a lot of good times watching that so if you'd like to know any of that information you can find it all in the description box below all right so I am sweating up a storm not because of cardio but because I'm bringing my groceries in it is 84 degrees out I think it's like close to 90 degrees with the heat index but it's pretty warm outside I'm about to go park my car in the garage just because I like parking it in front of the condo unloading everything and then parking it in the garage just because going from the garage to here is a pain but I wanted to do a quick rundown of uh, some of the stuff that I pick up as far as like healthy eating is concerned um, but yeah let's just go through it all right so starting over here I usually pick up a few loaves of bread that usually last me for a while I'll put two in the freezer I'll keep one out and then whenever I start getting low on one I'll bring one out of the freezer uh, this prolongs the life of it by a lot you just don't want to leave it in the freezer for too long because then when you do thaw it the bread will get stiff and hard got a bunch of tuna i got some almonds the only things i really got that weren't exactly healthy and i'll go over both of them um, i got some parmesan chicken breast i usually just slice that up and put that in my salads then i also wanted to try some strawberry vinaigrette um, it it's not exactly something i'm used to <laughs> um, I think I've only had one other vinaigrette. The reason I got this was because it's healthier than traditional dressing. I've been eating my salads raw for like the past three weeks and it's, I'm not a rabbit, so that taste really isn't doing anything for me. So I wanted to get something to put on it. And if you use uh, serving sizes, two, uh, two tablespoons, and that is 120 calories per serving. So if you just use two tablespoons of this, maybe two and a half, uh, you're not going to be hurting the calorie intake with uh, vinaigrette. So that's something to look into if you're not a huge fan of salads. Got plenty of tuna. Going over here, had to get some soap that ran out. This is all apples. I like doing apple slices for um, kind of a... Uh, it's not a bad dessert, but it's also not a bad snack either. Uh, got some sweet peppers I can add to my rice if I want. I got some bananas and plums can't go wrong with those need some potassium uh, and then the other two things that i got that were not exactly healthy would be a big box of goldfish as a snack every now and then and tortilla chips which i also like to crunch up and put in with the rice and the peppers on top of that i just got a bunch of other goodies i got some grapes in here for snacks i also got some blueberries as well and last but not least sort of would be 
my lettuce for my salads, uh, some celery, it's like if I'm doing uh, just a snack food or if I want to chop it up with the uh, tuna, uh, add a little bit of mayo, not much, uh, and then have a tuna sandwich. But then other than that, the only other stuff I got is water. So not a whole lot going on for $110. Eating healthy is not cheap. Yeah, that's normally what I get when I go shopping. Uh, so that gives you guys a better idea of what I'm taking in as far as my healthy eating goes. I've cut out a huge amount with eating out. Um, if I do, I may do Pizza Hut once a month at the most. I haven't had Pizza Hut in about three weeks, uh, which normally I did it almost every weekend before, and that's how I gained so much weight. On top of that, I also, um, don't go to Subway nearly as much. I may do Subway once a week, maybe twice max. And that's not going to hit the wallet as hard as a Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut was over 20 bucks a weekend. Whereas Subway is, what, six something per sandwich. So I, I'm not seeing a huge, uh, huge hit to the wallet with that one. And I'm getting a healthier sub when I go there nowadays. All right, guys. So today was actually a really good day. Uh, well, somewhat. I did have to leave work and do some work at home today just because um, they needed to test the uh, the fire alarm in each of the condo units and they gave me a note saying that if I wasn't here between 1 and 5 when they came to visit I would have to be docked a hundred dollar fine and they would have to reschedule them coming out here so I didn't want to do that uh, which is unfortunate other than that it wasn't that bad of an issue uh, but it did give me some time um, once I finished the work that I was supposed to do, I, I got cleaning the condo and I wanted to work on the Millennium Falcon. So I'm gonna show you what we're up to so far. 10 wasn't huge, but it added some really key things uh, in the front, meaning a couple pieces on the inside of here, as well as the rest of the casing that goes on top of the front of the ship, the two, the two uh, ends of the ship here. Um, and then with, it, it did add some stuff uh, here and there around it, but very small. But step 11 really added a, a key feature. It added some um, some stuff on the side here, and I'll just rotate this around. It added these pieces right here onto either side, which extend basically from here to here, and it covers the bottom of the ship. I think the next step is working on pieces that cover the tops of these, so that's really cool. The hard part that I had to do with this, and I'll kind of see if I can show you. So this one's gonna be really tough to show, but right here where these red prongs are right here, they're on either side, and it's connecting a piece that's, you can kind of see the edge of it right here, it's like a curve. It goes around the, the bottom of it, and it houses the gun. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Okay, you can kind of see the outline of the gun, but it's connected to a circular piece that sits right in front of it, the gun being this part right here. That part was actually a tad annoying because um, it, it's so much easier to do this with two people. I had to lift the Millennium Falcon with one hand while aligning that piece underneath it so that it fit on either side of where the prongs press in to keep it in place. I had to line that piece up with one hand while holding the rest of the Millennium Falcon up with the other hand. So that was a little hectic and scary at first, but I got it in and I'm good to go. Also, for all the Disney fans out there, look, it came in the mail. Got my, uh, my Magic Band. This isn't the only one I'm gonna be taking. I got a limited edition one that I'm also gonna be taking, but this one, I got Tigger written on the back of it. Uh, I like to, when I get one like this, I like to take a solid color like this one and apply it to a Disney character that I really like. So for orange, it was Tigger. For yellow, it was Pooh. Uh, for gray, it was Jack, like Jack Skellington. Uh, for blue, I believe I had Stitch, and I'm not sure what I got for the other ones. Uh, anytime I go and I get a solid color, though, I like to try and get the name of a Disney character on the back of it. For anyone who got a Magic Band, do you like to put a unique name on it, or do you like to just go flat, whatever your name is? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I got some more Pop Funko figures, and these happen to be all of the characters from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and I'll show you a picture of those right now. Um, but looking at the mayor, actually I'll hold off to show you the picture until I show you this reveal, um, but the mayor is supposed to look like this, with a happy face on him. Well, for some characters, they may come out with a chase, which is a different model of that one. Oh, my phone just went off. 
But yeah, this is what the Chase one looks like. It's his other side of the his uh, mask or face. Um, which is really cool. Like, I didn't think I would actually ever get a Chase. But they when I walked in to get it, these were the only Nightmare Before Christmas ones that were actually shipped to them. And I luckily got a Chase, which is so cool. And the cool thing about Chases is, is that they shoot up in price pretty quickly. Um, because they're so much more rare than the originals. So... The original is $11.99. The Chase is already up to an average of $60 in the markets. So, this is really cool. But he is a brand new one for the collection. And I'll show you a picture of what the other ones look like right now. And you can see all of them from Sally to Sandy Claus to uh, the 10-inch Jack and Zero. And uh, the other Jack, the, uh, the angry, mean-looking Jack. Uh, so cool to find these. I wish I could find the older ones, but those are a little more pricey. Nothing beats a nice, relaxing night. Got some thunder in the background. Good stuff. All right, so just looking at if Disney does announce that they're doing the International Art Festival, which I wouldn't put that out of the question that they are going to, since they are doing the Food and Wine Festival uh, just at a limited capacity compared to what it was. Um, if they do do the Art, art Festival, the International Art Festival, I looked at what the rates might be between um, going for a, a Saturday to Saturday, which is something I normally do, or just dedicating this to a smaller trip um, and doing Monday through Friday. So on the left side of the screen, I did the check-in and I just randomly picked the same uh, the same range of dates. So for this one, I picked the 30th of January, um, which roughly should be close to the start or middle-ish of, I want to say the start of the art festival, uh, to the 6th. And in the, oops, in the second one, I picked the 1st through the should be the fifth yep the first through the fifth uh for one adult looking at the prices because the weekends are much more expensive you're looking at a pretty pricey jump and that could potentially make or break a trip because that can mean more money in your pocket for other things such as food or souvenirs uh so just looking at the full seven uh was it seven or eight days for um uh, yeah eight days for the uh, saturday to saturday you're looking at a pretty substantial jump here you're looking at the like, pop century is 160 compared to the 146 um, another easy one to pop out would be Coronado Springs and this is just for a standard room uh, it's almost $250 where it's only $210 uh, roughly if you were to stay at, and of course I'm rounding up obviously but um, stay at this one for the shorter amount of time so moving forward I think that's something to definitely take into effect if you truly need to go for a trip um, for so many days so for this one I would only really need to see Epcot a couple days as well as Magic Kingdom being the main park and um, all the rides there I don't tip I don't technically need to go to Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios if I have free time I will but I don't necessarily have to so just keeping that in mind I think it's beneficial for me um, at this time just to make it a shorter week or a shorter trip from a Monday to a Friday instead of a Saturday to a Saturday. This is still a really hard pill for me to swallow right now. I, I really don't want to believe it. Um, but apparently for the past four years Chadwick Boseman has been battling uh, colon cancer since 2016 um, and he just passed away. There, There's quite a few things that matter a lot with this um, with him passing away, I can remember an episode of Static Shock, the cartoon, where they actually dealt with racism. And that was, the way they did it was perfect. I, I thought it was really good from what I can remember. And other than that, they really didn't have any black superheroes that were, that I felt were, were hitting the notch of really connecting with people. Like, they, they would come out with some every now and then but they really weren't on that same level as Chad and when he comes out with Black Panther he could go toe to toe with popularity and everything with the likes of Captain America and Superman and all of the popularity of those characters he could go toe to toe with that 
and that's what I love. They finally had a a high popularity, mainstream, powerful black superhero that literally inspired millions of children worldwide and gave adults and children that have dealt with minority issues it gave them so much hope and, and courage and power and for him just to be taken away from cancer it really sucks uh, now in terms of Black Panther 2 if they haven't made it yet I hope they don't make it I hope they kind of just leave Black Panther alone if they haven't made it yet. I don't want them to recast it. I don't want them to touch anything of it. Um, just because Chadwick Boseman was the Black Panther. You can't replace him. That being said, if they did already make it, or if they were in the process of making it, um, I hope the ending reflects something like this, like maybe doing a big tribute at the end of the movie uh, for for the character that he brought to life on the big screen um, it just it just blows my mind I can't I can't comprehend this right now because of the timing of this with all of the protests and riots that have been going on and now here in Wisconsin with Kenosha um, this couldn't have come at a worse time and it just feels like all the good people go when you least expect it I hope his friends and family find guidance in this hard time and they will be in my thoughts and prayers all right so i hope you guys are all doing well i didn't want to leave this on a low note with the passing of chadwick boseman um so i wanted to let a day or two go by and then end it on much higher note so um i got another disney trip planned much shorter one that's uh only like a monday through a friday type thing so it's a lot cheaper and a lot shorter than my other one i'm not going to be filming on this coming up trip with Mitchell just because I haven't really enjoyed a trip where I wasn't filming or vlogging um, and I could just take in all the sites and seeing that's going to be a little different with um, the pandemic going on I just wanted to focus on enjoying the trip as much as possible that being said when I go in February for the uh, art festival hopefully it's still going on um, that that I will vlog in because I'm only going to be going to a couple parks and I want to film as much of the art festival as I possibly can. But I will discuss more about my next Disney trip in the next video. I don't want to take up any more time with this one. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you all in the next video. Take care and peace out.